Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. It's been a really long time since I posted, but I have actually designed a couple things and I've increased my skills a lot. So I thought, hey, I'd get back into making some videos and tutorials to help you guys out. So in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you my beetle design. So this is my beetle. It's folded from this about this size of paper. And I have the crease pattern, and I'm going to teach you guys how to make it. Okay? So, this is the crease pattern. And this is the sheet I'm going to be using. So, I am using 24 centimeter craft, I think. Maybe 20 centimeter. I'm not sure. But normally, I fold it from way smaller, around 10 centimeter. So, that's the size I normally use. This is the size we're going to be teaching on. And this is the crease pattern. Yeah, okay, um, I'll see if I can leave a link for the crease pattern in the description, but if I can't, just reference off of this one, and I'll show you the lines and everything. Okay, so another thing is, I hope this is going to be also sort of like a crease pattern class, like um, Fearless Flourish and Origami by Voice, they're both doing it really really good crease pattern classes definitely go check it out if you haven't already um but yeah i'm going to be teaching you guys how to fold off of this crease pattern it has a couple things in here that you guys that are necessary to know when you're folding crease patterns like hinges and yeah that's about it there is a weird transition right here that i'm also going to show you how to deal with and it's going to be pretty fun okay here we go Okay, so the first thing you're going to want when folding this model is a 16 grid. You can tell that it's a 16 grid because if you count alongside it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then multiply that by 2, 16 on both sides. So that's the first thing you always want to identify when folding a model. The second thing is to fold a grid. So we're going to fold a 16 by 16 grid. So yeah, I'm going to start that right now. we start going on to the next part which is going to be pre-creasing um i just want to say if the setup is really bad just excuse me for a while i don't really have the best filming equipment right now or the best setup so i'm hoping to get that soon if channel gets more traction i'm also going to start trying to upload more soon but i have a busy schedule with school and everything but yeah let's get started with the pre-creasing um, let me go get a pencil real quick. Okay. So, the first thing you want to do when you start pre-creasing is to identify the major lines, or the lines that you're going to want to have to pre-crease. So, judging from this right now, we can see that this is going to be a pleat. So, this is going to come out and this is going to be this part on the model right here okay and basically you're going to want to fold all the diagonal lines that's what pre-creasing does so you're going to want to fold that 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 and if you want to you can do these but these things are most important um, again also do these diagonal lines so yeah, let's get started with that. So the first one right here, this one. So we're gonna go up three, and then down three, and then up two, and then over three. So back this way, three. 
and then you can pre-crease these if you'd like, but they're not really that necessary. So I am, okay, so I'm gonna do this one and this one, but not these, because these are just a repeat of this one, because this is a hinge. I'll explain that a bit later. So yeah, we're gonna go one down, skip two, and two up, this part. Okay, actually, never mind. Let's just put those in for now. Um, just so I don't get confused. Okay, so then we're going to want to repeat that on this side. So flip it over. Same thing. Up three. Down three. Up two. Over three. Down one, up one, down one, up two, like that. And then, now we're gonna start pre-creasing this part. So, right here we have the middle part, okay? So we're gonna start off from the middle, like that, and that. Up, out two, in one, And then out one, two, three, four. So four on both sides. One, two, three, four. And then we're gonna go back three. Okay. And the last part of this will be the level shifter. So right here, this is the most important part that we're gonna to wanna to pre-crease. So it's right here. This little square. Like that. And then also if you want to, you can also pre-crease this part. So let's just draw that in. Like that. So our pre-crease model should look like this. I have no idea if that showed up at all, but if it didn't, that's too bad. Okay. So yeah, this is the pre-crease model, and now we can get on to collapsing. Before we start collapsing, we're actually going to need to pre-crease the lines. Completely forgot to do that, I just drew them out for you. So what we're going to do is pre-crease the lines. So again, just fold along all those lines. If you drew them out, fold along the drawn lines. Or if you did already pre-crease them, uh, crease them. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go through here and pre-crease all the lines. Next thing what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the finished model and determine what part of the crease pattern is, is going to become what part of the model. So most of the time when you start a crease pattern, you, you're going to obviously want to know what the model looks like and know which part of the crease pattern leads up to the finished model. So we are going to take a look. Once I'm done pre-creasing this, we are going to take a look at the finished model and the crease pattern and see the similarities and what they have. So yeah, just fold along all the problems.
finishing up the pre creasing. I am being a bit sloppy with this, which probably isn't the best thing, but it's okay. I do know this model pretty much by heart, but I'm just using a crease pattern to show you guys how I do it, how it's supposed to be done. Okay, this side is pre-creased, now let's finish this side. Okay, pre-creasing is now done. Now we're gonna take the finished model, the beetle, and compare it to what the compare it to the crease pattern. So let's take the big one right here. So judging from it, it doesn't look that similar. Okay, but the first things you always want to point out is you are if you can see the model, you can obviously tell the legs and the points. So the outer points are these six legs right here, and those are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's how we know where the six legs are. The pincers are right up here, because they all lead up into one point, so the two pincers. And now I bet you guys are wondering, what are these all these little lines that lead across here? So these are called hinges. So that basically lifts up the, it basically shows you how to shape, and also will shift up the model. Um, a bit so let, let me see how I can describe it so this part right here there's an open spot that will create this front shell sort of thing um, and then these are valley folds so that's how you know it'll fold down and then right here it'll fold down these two are mountain right here's a mountain fold so you know there's gonna be a lift up and then a valley fold so it's gonna lift down and then also a point in the bottom that we're going to use to shape the shell. Um, if you are folding this from craft or any other type of paper, just letting you know, you might want to try it out with tissue foil because that's the way that you're going to create the best shaping. Okay, now we're going to move on to the collapse. Okay, so the first things that you're always going to want to do when you're collapsing a model, like a beetle that has a shell, is start from the middle. So I will always tell you this, the easiest way to start these type of models is always to start from the middle because it's way harder to collapse from the outside in. Um, other people might do it, but for me it makes it a lot harder. So we're just going to go from the outside, or from the inside, my bad. Over here. So the first thing you'll notice is, hey, why not get these pincers done because they're already here. So we're going to fold these pincers in, just like here, valley, mountain, 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 valley. So fold those in, like that. Okay, the next part that we're going to do is this little uh, level shifter thing right here. So there's, there's a mountain and then four valleys around it. So we're going to, and then another thing is it's also a continuous mountain folds along here. So what we're going to do is mountain fold along here. So we're already getting some of the creases in. And then you just sort of squish it together and there's one half of it. Now let's just do the other half. Okay. So 
So we have this part right here. And then the mountain fold. Like that. If this is really bad and you guys can't see it very well, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to make a better video if you want me to. Okay. This is really messy. My bad. Okay. Yeah, I am so sorry. This is like really messy. It should look a lot nicer. Okay. So now that we have this thing pre-creased, it's not really fitting together like it's, like it's supposed to because we got these things. They don't match up at all because it's supposed to lie flat. What do we have to do? We have to collapse this part. So this is the tricky part. First thing you're, you're going to want to see is, number one, there's a hinge. So there's going to be a valley fold and then a mountain fold. So how I figured this, when I was designing this, um, basically these two are mountains and these are valleys. So, and then also there's a mountain right here. So you're going to sort of form a box around it, like this, okay? And then you're going to have like this, okay? And then we have the two mountains, the mountain, the valley. When you collapse it, if you look at behind, then you can sort of collapse it in the right direction, like this, okay? And then, there we go. This collapses nice and easy. It'll collapse even nicer when we get the other parts of the crease pattern finished, okay? Now, let's just do this on the other side. Again, we create sort of like the box on the outside. Again, pop this down. So we create the box like this. Okay. And then, super easy, quick collapse. So again, we have the valley fold, mountain fold, mountain fold, valley fold, valley. And then, these also are just the regular line. So when it collapses together, we should have this fold forward like this. Okay. So, if you've been following along, we have another point right here. So this from the box already makes it want to go up a bit. So that's where we come to the next thing. This has a lot of hinges and it also tells you how it's gonna go. So right here is a mountain, and then mountain in here, valley, and then mountain on the top. So if we collapse this like this, the hinge is created and we have the little shifter. Now, the rest of the model is actually pretty easy to collapse. So we can just pretty much go collapsing as usual. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from here and have little Elias stretches in here. And just collapse like normal along the lines following the crease pattern. So mountain, mountain, valley, valley. Mountain fold, mountain fold, mountain, like that. This is also a bit sloppy, so hope you guys don't mind it too much. Now let's do that on this side. Okay.
Okay. Now we have this part. So these two sides are collapsed, and now we just need to do the rest of it. So pop this into place like this. Again, we have another hinge right here. So let's fold the hinge and follow the crease pattern. If you are watching the video and you already know how to fold the crease pattern, go for it if you don't need my instruction. But this is also this is a crease pattern class, so sort of like your crease pattern class, so hopefully it really helps people that need to learn how to make crease patterns. Again, if this one doesn't work for you, go watch Origami by Voice and Fearless Flourish, because they both have amazing crease pattern classes that are way higher quality than I do. Theirs don't really make models per se but still really good if you're learning how to do crease patterns. Um, I think I'll put links to their channels in the description, so if you want to go check them out. Okay. So, the collapse model. Once you put all the hinges and everything in, it should look like this. Okay? that is what the collapse model looks like. Now we're going to get into shaping. So shaping this model is going to be extremely hard with this paper. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to fold it a lot smaller with this sheet of tissue foil and it's going to be a small beetle and I'm going to show you guys how I shape it. And I'm going to do it up close to the camera so it's going to be easier for you guys to see. So like that close. Okay. Let's get started on that. Okay, so I have finished making the, so we have the craft base, craft paper base right here. So this paper would be very hard to shape and make it into a nice shell because the paper is too thin and I don't want to have to use any glue right now. So I'm just going to show it to you guys with this really small sheet of paper that I just folded. So this is tissue foil. And I use this exact same size to make the beetle. So what I'm going to do is show you guys how to shape the model. Okay. So the first thing is that we have the, um, we have the front shell. Okay. So we have the front shell and then this part right here. What I always do before I start is I make the front shell. The first step is to fold this in half, the front part in half, and then fold the corners in. Then you get a little bit of a rounded off shape of the shell, but it's not a perfect circle either. So it has a little bit of touch. Okay, so we have that. A bit hard to see, hopefully it'll focus. Okay, next part is to fold this up and to make the beetle shape, the little line down the center, it won't look like that if we just have it straight. So what we have to do is take the first layer and fold it in half towards the center. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just squash the ends right there like that and then at the top, just go like that and sort of squash it in there too because no one is going to be seeing this part then we do that on the other side also okay Hopefully this is good. Okay. So we have it like this right now. Next thing that we're going to want to do is shape the pincers. So just fold these in half and shape them to your liking. 
because I'm using a single tissue, or since I'm using tissue foil, there's foil in there, which makes it really easy for shaping. So I definitely recommend everyone, if you have tissue foil, use it for this model because it makes it super easy. We also, on the back shelf, fold it in like this. But just a little bit, not all the way. Because we still gotta have that rounded off shape. Okay. So it looks like this right now. Front shell looking like that, and the pincers like this. Okay, so the next step is to fold. The next step is we're gonna bring the legs out so then you can see the shape of the beetle. Then we know what we're gonna be shaping it into and we know what it's gonna look like. Okay. Okay, there's the view from the bottom. This is the view from the top. Okay. So, the next part that we have is to, um, this is completely optional, but I always love doing it. So, there's a little part right here. What you can do is fold this in. Um, which part is it? Right here. Fold this in like that, then you have two different parts, the legs to the feet like that and it makes it look a lot cooler here's the example on this one like that little addition but I think it looks pretty cool wait a second I actually messed up a bit um let's see okay there we go yeah so it's like this Actually, never mind. You can just put that in there if you want. Okay. So we have it like that. Do the exact same on this side if you'd like to. Again, you don't have to. You can keep the legs straight if you want. Again, sorry if the camera is really blurry because I'm doing it up close. It's hard to see. Okay. So we have it like that. Okay. So before we shape the legs, I want to shape the shell of the beetle. So what we're going to do is let's get it to focus. We're going to pull this out like this. Okay? So make sure to follow because this part is pretty important. So yeah, we pull out this side on both sides. So gradually goes in like this sort of like that okay next step is to make the beetle shape so I what I normally do is I fold it like this fold it in so then we have a beetle like shape and then I'll usually lock it. Um, and then fold. Yeah. So it's like this. Again, you can fold this however you want. If you want to try shaping it completely different, go ahead, experiment with the model. Okay. Next full shaping the legs. This is probably the easiest part of the model since legs on insects are super easy to shape. Just shape them to your liking pretty much. Okay. For tissue foil, it's really easy because you can just squeeze it, squish it together. There you go. You got the legs. Okay, the last one. And then the back legs, of course. This ones are a bit trippier because they have a little thing, but you fold in half, bring these out a bit, 
and then there you go, your back legs. For this model, it's super simple at least. Get those back legs in. Here. Let's get the final back leg done. And then shape the shell up a bit more so it looks a little bit more realistic. And then we're done. Okay, so final shaping, when you're done, should look like this. Okay, your little beetle, you've got the little legs, and it's pretty cute. So I don't really know of an easier 16 grid beetle, or a more realistic looking 16 grid beetle than this one. Um, but then also, as you can see, if you open it up a little bit in the middle, you have the little thing, and that can... Open that up a little bit if you want to see that thing in the middle, because there is the little line. Yeah. Okay. So we have that. There we go. The beetle is finished. Compare it with the previous one. Pretty similar. Okay. Put these down. Okay. Thank you guys for watching this video. I really hope that helped. And if you did enjoy the model, please make sure to like subscribe if you know anyone else that really does have an issue with crease patterns and you think hey this one might help them because i feel like i did a pretty good job of explaining how to do it share it with them you know help them out a bit um if you guys do want to see me make more videos in the future um or what type of videos you guys want me to make please comment it down below and i will make sure to leave a link to voices and Fearless Flourishes, both of their crease pattern tutorials, because those are both really, really good ones. Um, yeah, so hopefully I'm going to try to upload a bit more. Um, and yeah, I'm also going to do a giveaway soon, because we just hit 50 subscribers a while back. Yeah, so I might do that. Let me know if you want that. And then, last thing is, I created an Instagram account. Account. So if you want to follow that, I'll probably put it in the description. Um, I post a lot of my origami on there. Um, yeah, so that if you want to see what I'm folding, or maybe what videos might be coming up soon, make sure to go follow that. Anyways, see you guys. Have a great day. And yeah, hope this helped.